Recon is hands down one of the most important parts of hacking and it comes in all kinds of flavors. You can go wide and find a bunch of subdomains, dig into those tiny micro apps and just blow up your attack surface. Or you can go narrow, stick to one application and see what you can unlock by digging through those JavaScript files or just simply reading the documentation provided by the company. Now, let me clear something up. Recon is not the same as automation. Automation is when you're building out your own custom nuclei templates or hacking together tools to scan the internet for specific bugs. And honestly, that space feels a little bit played out unless you're doing some next level research and you're doing your own reverse engineering of new CVEs and dropping your own POCs. But if you do wanna see a video on automation, drop a comment saying automation. And in the next three weeks, maybe, just maybe I'll drop a video on that topic as well. In this video, I'm just gonna simply show you some of my favorite recon sources and how I use them to either go wide or go narrow depending on the target that I'm hacking on. So let's start with our first one. The first thing I wanna show you guys is the Project Discovery Chaos. This project is amazing, especially if you're looking at bug bounty programs or VDPs that are public, because what they do is they're actively monitoring different companies and they're all just dumping all of these companies here within their websites. And all this data is typically free unless you wanna hit their API, which if you do wanna hit the API, then you can go up here and create an account on projectdiscovery.io and then it will give you an API key and you can use the CLI. But this is cool because if you're, for example, hacking on Netflix, they will give you all of these subdomains based on their bug bounty program, which looks like this is a little bit outdated because it shows it's on bug crowd, even though they've moved to hacker one, but they're actively scanning them and giving you these files and you can download it. But the cool thing about this, like I mentioned earlier, is the CLI. You can actually use a command prompt tool and actually get all this data easily. And let me show you how that works. To use chaos with the CLI like this, like I am, you need to have your key set up already and i'm going to quickly just set it up and if you run it it will just simply uh, run that entire command within a company that you want to so let's say we are hacking on uh, i want to look at netflix like i mentioned earlier i can just type in dash d and we can type in netflix i want to use the silent tag and then it's going to just spit out all of these domains that they have and if we do a word count really quickly we can see that it's just simply and easily giving us 2,640 domains without calling any other tools like Subfinder or Domain Finder, any other ones, it just gives it to you. It's great. It's a very good passive way to get subdomains. And honestly, if you're hacking on bug money programs on a public, this is amazing. The one thing that it does lack, I gotta tell you is, obviously if you're looking at private programs that you have access to, you will probably not be able to get data from it from chaos because if you go into uh, their website right here and you click on the list of their bug bounty program data it will bring you a list that they have on here that you can also contribute to if you find something that is missing but they're only focused on these specific domains and nothing else so if you go into here you can see you have all these different programs from all these different platforms or if it's self-hosted and they're only focused on those it is open source it is free data but it's not everything that you need which brings me to our next source just c99.nl that i've been using more than all the other tools out there because it gives me current data on everything that I need. So usually you would see me in my videos using something like cert.sh. Cert.sh has been a little bit unreliable and I've been just switching over to C99 because it is also very, very cheap. I think it's like $25. You can just pay them that for a year and they give you access to their API and all the data that they have. So let's look at it really quickly. So with C99.nl, you have a couple of options. The first one is obviously the subdomain finder. You can go in here and actually give them a domain and make it a private scan. So if you click here, it is going to immediately do a scan for you and give you all of the different domains that they have. And you can see it's pretty good and it tells you if it is behind Cloudflare or not. And it just spits out this entire thing, which you can just download and uh, copy paste it and put it in your notes or you know feed it to your next tool. But what I do like to do here is I like to use their API. It is really easy to use because they give you all the different calls that you have and you can easily sort them. So I'm gonna to go to web tools right here and we can just use it to do things like look at the WAF. They can detect what WAF they're using. They can give you the IP to the domains. You don't need a lot of these, honestly. The whois checker is cool, but honestly, the best part is just using their subdomain finder and their Cloudflare resolver, which is really, really helpful. Let's quickly copy this, go to our terminal. We're just going to send a curl to this and I'm just going to clean this up really quickly. And we're just going to run Snapchat for this, which will come back and give us a bunch of domains. You do have to clean this up a little bit if you wanted to uh, use it. I'm just going to use said like this and just say replace all the BRs with a new line. And if we run this, we'll get a bunch of beautiful domains given to us from snapchat.com. And we can just do a world count, for example, and see what comes of it, which is about 207 
uh, different supplements. Not bad. It isn't the best, but it's also more reliable than so that is Satan. It is something that I've started using more recently. Obviously, if you have access to this, you can just go into SubFinder, put the API key for this tool within the configuration file and use it. But sometimes I like to do things manually just for my own purpose because I want to look at it. I don't want to trust tools to give me all the data. Sometimes they are configured in a weird way and they miss things. So short story is I like to do C99 like this. And uh, this is one of the newer sources that I've been uh, contributing and using more and more with my bug bounty hunting and it's only $25 and if you want to use it I'll put a referral link down below uh, use it and it's only again 25 bucks a year love this tool so far and by the way not sponsored so if you're watching this you want to sponsor how that's your boy so so far we've talked about going wide maybe you want to look for targets to hack on and you can combine chaos and c99 especially if you're hacking on public bug bounty programs right but what if we wanted to go both wide and narrow the point of this is not only to find subdomains, but also find information on those subdomains that we can extend or use in our hacking or just finding vulnerabilities. A lot of people use a tool called Wayback URLs or Get All URLs. I have just recently switched to Waymore because it's gives you the entire data dump and lets you do a lot more with it. So I'm going to show you how quickly that works. But just remember, Waymore depends on other sources. It's not a tool of its own. I think it relies on virus total. Uh, Wayback Machine and Common Crawl and one more if I'm not mistaken. I'll pull it up in just a sec. But just remember, again, this is a tool that relies on other sources. So you can create your own tool that goes after those sources and does something specific for you. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to stick to Waymore for this one. And I'm going to show you how I use it. So this is where you can download Waymore from XML Hackers GitHub Repository. The cool thing about it is actually I was wrong. It does do Wayback. It does do Common Crawl. But it does also look at Alien Vault, URL Scan, Virus Total and intelligence x uh this is obviously a paid source but you do have to use the configuration and configure it to give it your api key but we're just going to use this vanilla and show you how simply this works for this to work we need to do obviously an input this is our domain so for example if you wanted to give it a specific tld like that mail that would probably work but also we can just go as far as just giving a domain or anything that we need there's mode where it is to retrieve urls it is to download the responses or b for both i'm going to use both and i'll show you why in just a sec and then you have the outputs and uh, filter responses and so on. So show a terminal really quickly. And we're just going to do way more slash I. And we'll just give it a company like snapchat.com to make it easy. I don't want to do something large because this will take forever. Then we're going to do mode B. And we're just going to run this. It looks like I did something wrong. It's one dash for mode. And now we should be running this. This will take a little bit of time. So we'll give it a little bit. And once this is done, we're going to go with all the data. So as you may see right now, I started running this at 3.40 and it's currently 7.05. It is a bad idea to launch this on a massive program without actually excluding some stuff. So if you're looking at this video and you're wondering how to exclude sources, this is how you do it. Wayback is the one that I would keep. Common Crawl is the one that I would keep. URL Scan and Virus Total are the ones I would probably do manually. I'll show you how to do Virus Total in just the next segment. But this is just a good reminder that it is going to take forever for it to come back but once you've gotten all this data it's going to be under your config folder under way more results and then you type in the domain where you want to actually uh, find so we did snapchat.com i'm going to go to this folder and we have all of this data i'm just going to actually show you how large these files are so the way more is massive it's almost a uh, half a gig so if i do cat way more you can see all of these urls that it's found but not only it's finding us stuff on www but it's also showing us things and uh content from other pages so you can see there's static there's business help you can actually grip v and go through all of these and just kind of ignore um the ones that you don't want to see so for example if i want to ignore dot tr i can just do that i can do static so let's do grip v uh, yeah, I could do a grip be static, probably not the best way to do it, but I just want to show you, you can actually skip these. So this is a really good way to go both wide and both narrow at the same time. It's giving you context on all these websites and what they could be running on there. And sometimes you can just look for parameters like URL, for example, and see if there is anything with a URL. So right here, there is something with URL, but it looks like it's just clicks. Maybe if I wanted to redirect, uh, maybe I'm desperate for redirect for one of my chains. You can look for it. Uh, in here so this is a really good place to do both but there's also something really cool about having all of these results because what you can do here is you can actually open one of these files and set a scope and say snapchat.com so let's say i'm gonna maybe do my uh one of these random html files or all the html files i might just do this if i use xnl link finder which is another tool by xnl hacker i would just take all the links it's going to take a while for this it will take all the links and all the parameters and actually just output them so if i just do it with a cat instead of all of them 
like this. Now we have created an output.txt that has all of these links based on all those HTML files that we downloaded the response for, and also gives you a list of parameters that you can actually take and maybe use across other bug bounty programs or use them for your param.txt and so on. So it's a really, really great resource. I highly recommend looking into using Wayback, especially with these different options, excluding some, including some others, going through them manually, building your own methodology, but this is a really good place to start off. And I wanna make sure I highlight this before we go into our last segment. And the last thing I wanna show you quickly is Alien Vault. And that's something that I've been using manually because it gives you context on a lot of these different assets especially when it comes down to third parties. Actually, Godfather or was on a talk on this, I think five or six months ago at B-Size Ahmedabad. I'll link it down below in the description or in the actual pinned comments. He actually claims in that talk that he has been able to find credentials for Okta and actually uses it for third party services. But I want to kind of show you how that looks uh, from my perspective as well. So the thing that we can do here is we can do a curl. We're going to hit this API, uh, the report API for it. I'm going to call my API key. And here's when we can specify a domain. I just did snapchat.com earlier. We can do the same thing here. We put snapchat.com. It is going to give us some JSON stuff. I am just going to use jq-r to make it look better. If you haven't watched my video from last week on the Linux commands to use for bug bounty hunters, JQ is on there, go check it out. But JQ is going to just make this JSON look a lot prettier for us. And if we go up here now, we can see that it is giving us some subdomains like blog.snapchat.com. It's giving us some links to some stories probably. There is some AWS link right here. Let's see where it's at. Uh, I'm going to look for AWS. AWS like this. It looks like there is something here for it. Uh, there's a couple other things, API, AWS, proxy, snapchat.com, and so on. So this is a great place to actually find more subdomains. But what is really, really cool about this is actually digging deeper for some of these other uh, subdomains. So for example, API, in this case, I don't know if it's going to find us anything, but sometimes you can look for API and it would have cached responses or requests that may have some API key. So for example, in this one, we missed it. There's no API key, but Maybe we can look for it and see if the other results have it. It doesn't look like it, but it's a good place to look for uh, looking for API keys and link information. One of the things that I've done before with this is, well, actually for one of my pen tests that I did, what I did was I ran their subdomains or their API through this, and it started just giving me API routes that were leaking information, and then you could just index all the user's data. Somehow it was leaking maybe 100 something plus user's data, and it was kind of incredible to see it. So honestly, you have a lot of different options with this that you can actually... I uh, find some really cool stuff. One of the things that I know is interesting to look at is if you're looking for a service now, for example, I'm just going to do service now for Disney. I don't even know if they have one, but we launched service now here and let's do a JQ-R. And now it's going to come back and it's going to give you the different paths and you can see how they use, uh, for example, service now and see if it's accessible using your app and it doesn't. Maybe you can now look for this SSO My ID and it just gives you more and more context on where their internal assets are where are the different third parties they use and what it links to and so on. So one last try here, even though I don't know if this is going to work, but just for the sake of the demo, I'm going to give it this one more time. We can't have the slash in there. And then we can see now it's giving us tokens. Uh, I don't want to click these on the video, but it's giving us some tokens. It's giving us the routes for account settings. So if you have SSO and logged in, maybe it says employee tokens, who knows, but sometimes you will find some really, really interesting stuff here, but it is incredible to be able to get context on how the app looks and what are the different routes for it and so on. All right, that's it. Those are probably the top four recon sources that I use. You can use them to go either really, really wide, find all the supplements that you want, or you can go really, really narrow on a specific application. Honestly, you can just bundle all of them together, write your own script, go use some open source tools that are around these different sources, combine them all together and find some bugs. All right, that's it. Do me a favor. We are almost to 200,000 subs. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, drop a like, drop a comment, and I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.